Hello everyone, my name is Typhoon and in this lecture we are going to explore the technical specifications of RTL-STR and other software defined radio devices and you will also get familiar with some important STR terminology and uh, the, uh, let's get started with the technical specifications of RTL-STR uh, the frequency range, the most RTL-STR devices can tune into frequencies ranging from 22 megahertz to uh, 2200 megahertz however these numbers are approximate and may vary depending on the specific tuner model used and uh, we also have a bandwidth uh, the rtl -SCR has a maximum bandwidth of 3.2 megahertz but it's more stable around 2.8 megahertz and bandwidth refers to the range of frequencies that device can process at once and uh, we also have the analog to digital converter, the ADC in RTL STR is 8 bit, which gives uh, it a dynamic range of just under 50 decibels. So, dynamic range is the difference between the strongest and weakest signal that device can handle. And we, ca we also have the noise figure, uh, this noise figure, which indicates how much noise the device adds to the signal is less than 4.5 decibels for the RTL STRs here. At a, a lower uh, noise figure means the better performance in weak signal conditions. And we also have the uh, learn in this lecture, uh, the terminology is input impedance. Uh, the input impedance is 75 ohms for all RTL STRs which is a measure of how much the device resists the flow of electrical current from the antenna. And the ADC, uh, the analog to digital converter, is a crucial part of RTLSDR. This ADC stands for analog, analog to digital converter. It's a small electronic component that takes an analog signal like the radio waves picked up by your antenna and converts it into a digital signal that your computer can understand. So for this uh, ADC here, we have two main um, thing, the bit depth and dynamic range. Uh, the bit depth of ADC, in this case for the RTL SDRs is 8 bit, um, determines how accurately uh, the analog signal is converted. And 8 bit ADC can convert the signal into one of 256 uh, different values, which is not as precise as 12-bit ADC that can differentiate between 4096 values. And we also have the dynamic range. The dynamic range of ADC tells us the difference between the smallest and largest signals it can handle uh, for an 8-bit ADC, like the RTL SDRs. The dynamic range is about 50 decibels, this means it can handle a wide range, um, wide variety of signal strengths, but it might miss some of the very weak signals, especially if there are stronger signals nearby. Uh, the maximum bandwidth uh, that an RTLSTR can handle is 3.2 megahertz. Um, this is specific to uh, RTL 2880, uh, RTL U chip, uh, which is most RTL SDR devices. However, depending on the performance of your computer, the most stable bandwidth is usually either selecting the 2.4 megahertz or 2.8 me megahertz because this matters here. So if you set the bandwidth too high uh, on a slower computer, the device might not be able to keep up, uh, leading to lost samples. This can result in chubby audio or other performance uses. And the most uh, SDR, um, most software that works with RTL SDR will let you choose uh, your bandwidth. Uh, this setting is sometimes called the sample rate, uh, for example, in SDR++. While the bandwidth and sample rate are not exactly the same, uh, the context of RTL SDR, uh, the setting the sample rate to, uh, to 2 MSPS, uh, which is mega samples per second, will give you 2 megahertz of bandwidth, but setting uh, it to 2.8 MSPS will give you uh, 2.8 MS uh, megahertz of bandwidth. So um, if you are familiar with uh, Nyquist theorem, which we will learn in 
um, next lectures more deeply. Uh, you might wonder how a 2 MSPS sample sample rate can result in 2 MHz of bandwidth. So this is possible because the RTLSTR uses something called IQ sampling, which involves two ADCs, analog to digital converters, working together. So in simple terms, the bandwidth uh, in the is the range of frequencies that you can see and analyze at one at um, any one time when using RTLSTR. So this uh, RTL RTL twenty eight uh, thirty two U dongles, the main component in the RTLSTR, are originally designed for uh, use with the TV television equipment. So they have an input um, impedance of 75 ohms. Uh, so the most radio equipment used by amateurs and professionals operates with like uh, 50 uh, ohm cables, connectors and adapters. So you might worry that this is a difference in impedance could cause problems, but the signal loss due to the this uh, mismatch is very small, like less than 0 0.2 uh, decibels. This means it won't noticeably affect the performance of your RTL SDR. So the RTL, uh, the R82, uh, 820T, and its improved variant, uh, the 820T2, are uh, most commonly desired and purchased RTL SDR variants. Um, uh, the R802 820T2 is a newer variant of the R802 <laughs> R820T tuner so uh, here we this, r this green one uh, I have here uh, came with R820T2 uh, model which is has better sensitivity compared to 820T, just T. And the E4000 used to be the most popular since they were first available, but Elonix, the manufacturer, has closed down making these chips, uh, rare and expensive, but you won't find this E4000 chips. Uh, but if you will find that, it will be like pretty expensive. But... Um, other tuners, uh, tuner variants are less common, especially online, but uh, some compatible tuner variants can sometimes be found in uh, local stores in Europe, in, uh, European Union. So these tuners are not as common uh, for a reason. They don't perform as well as the uh, this uh, R22 uh, uh, here. It's actually, uh, this, this one is R828. Uh, D, but this one is R um, 820T2 here, so it has better sensitivity here. So based on a uh, price and availability, uh, currently I recommend the this one, uh, this tuner here, because it's uh, it's almost I bought this from AliExpress for twenty one dollars, but the other one I bought for forty dollars, like. I could I could buy the two for the price of one here, but um, as I tried, like it has better performance, and I want I also wonder what's specific. Yeah, yeah, Th these are the almost uh, same megahertz, and yeah. Uh, this is twenty dollars. This is forty dollars. And uh, while the RTL STR offers best <laughs> value for money, of course, uh, there are like um, several more advanced STR uh, radios available that come with additional features. Uh, so these more advanced STRs might include the front end filters the, to he to help reduce interference from signals outside your uh, desired frequency range, uh, the larger ADCs, uh, analog to digital converters, these improve dynamic range and sensitivity, allowing SDR to pick up weaker signals more accurately. And uh, they might have wider bandwidth, uh, this allows SDR to process a larger range of frequencies at once, for example for the 
uh, hack RFs here. I have like mm, six gigahertz, um, and they they will have the wider frequency range. This ex expands uh, the types of signals uh, the STR can tune into, and some STRs can also transmit signals, not just receive them. So here um, I have the uh, hack RF, uh, which is frequency range of um, from 30 to 6,000, 6 gigahertz. The bandwidth is 20, ADC bit is eight, and it can, uh, it can both transmit or receive, but not at the same time. So HackerF is half duplex. You can buy the HackerF uh, for like, uh, for original one for 300, 400, or even $600. But I bought uh, this one from AliExpress for 150 United States uh, dollars and this one I bought for uh, 105 dollars. This has the portapack installed in it on it and but uh, I recommend this blackboard because the portapack installed uh, in it I will just show you the five old broken hack RF. That's the one uh, I broke. So the USB ports uh, broke um, easily. Uh, I, I think some capacitors uh, died there too, because uh, I can listen uh, to like uh, other uh, like uh, other signals uh, send them, but I cannot connect this to the computer because of the sound, I think some capacitors died here. So I will work through that. So I recommend that. So the, this one, this uh, port uh, installed with portaback comes with this uh, green board, but I highly recommend uh, if you uh, see that if you if you are buying from the AliExpress, I highly recommend this blackboard. They are still uh, they they are clones of the HackRF, but as you know, HackRF is open source, so it is legal uh, to buy one um, and use one, but uh, they they will have the similar uh, performances as well uh, because they uh, they both use similar shifts but that their design structure the diagrams is just little uh, different and we also have like uh, funcube air spy mirex sdr play which i don't have them right now because uh, for this uh, course uh, and for the most purposes of this hackrf the no, for more for the most purposes of sdr RTL STR, uh, you will just need um, RTL STR or HackRA for transmitting as well. And uh, these are, of course, the AirSpy Blade RF. They, they are uh, the expensive ones. For example, the Blade RF it just uh, is around eight hundred dollars. Uh, like US RP B two hundred is more than costs more than one thousand dollars. So I highly recommend uh, the hard uh, HackRF. If you have like bigger budget, but if you are on a budget, you can buy the RTL STR. And for the reception only STRs, uh, there are several options that offer improved performance compared to RTL STR. Uh, the Air Spy, uh, this has better performance than the RTL STR due to its improved ADC uh, bit size and advanced RF design. And I can also recommend you the STR Play. This uses the Mirix MSI. Uh, 3101 chip but includes switched first order filters uh, for improved performance and in the mid high end of the str hardware you will find hack rf blade rf uh, and usrps uh, this hack rf is capable of both receiving and transmitting but it can only handle it one at a time and uh, blade rf uh, supports full duplex operation meaning it can receive and transmit at the same time and we also have the usrp universal software radio per peripheral uh, offers advanced capabilities uh, the b200 uh, b210 can receive and transmit in two different channels at the same time but b200 uh, this is a full duplex on a single channel so thank you for watching i hope this uh, lecture uh, got you informed for the uh, the main sdr devices and some terminologies in next lecture, uh, I uh, we will do another test uh, with RTLSTR and to install drivers and things. 
So I'm waiting you in next lecture.